Welcome to the project overview for San Diego State University's ASCE Steel Bridge, presented by Heavy Metal Inc. The project team includes Jemson Marone, Michael Ellis, Ben Andrews, Jay Lee Williamson, and Keith Nelms. In this presentation, we'll be going over the structural constraints, structural analysis, bridge type selection, construction method, and environmental impact. I'm Keith Nelms. I will be presenting the bridge structural constraints. As described in the 2015 Student Steel Bridge Competition Rules, there are limitations on the individual members, the assembly hardware, and the overall dimensions of the bridge. Our team ensured that the bridge will be within all size and dimensional limits, avoiding violation cost penalties as high as $4 million. Beginning with the length, footing areas on each side with a one foot wide limit allow for bridges from 18 and a half to 20 and a half feet. Based on our design and analysis, it was decided that a bridge of 19 and a half feet in length was optimal. The height of the bridge is allowed to be a maximum of five feet and we will have taken the over truss within an inch or two of that maximum height since we discovered that a taller truss would better help resist deflection along the deck. The width of the bridge has been designed to be about 3 feet 9 inches, maintaining the minimum clearance of 3 feet 7 inches, but also staying well within the 5 foot maximum width to cut down on unnecessary weight. The deck will be placed at 1 foot 8 inches above the ground in order to be a safe distance above the minimum river clearance of 1.5 feet. Looking at the individual members, all parts must be made of steel and cannot exceed the size limits of 3 feet by 6 inches by 4 inches. Each hollow member will be approximately 1 pound in weight, well below the 15 pound limit. The reduction in weight is significant since each additional pound costs $20,000 this year. At the ends of each member will be a mix of sleeve and tabular connections. Where possible, bolts will also be permanently attached to one side of the connection points to reduce construction time and amount of loose hardware being handled. The connections must prove to be rigid while also conforming to the rules that dictate all members must either screw into each other or are connected by a bolt and nut. For each bolt nut connection, the hardware must be in contact with the member and the bolt threads must protrude past the nut. Any connection violation will result in a penalty of three minutes being added to the construction time. The bridge will consist of just over 50 individual members with the most efficient user-friendly connections to minimize construction time, allowing a four-person team the ability to beat the eight-minute build time goal after enough practice. Minimal construction time, weight, and deflection will ensure we reach our goal winning the competition against all other teams. I'm Ben Andrews and I will be presenting the bridge structural analysis. The first phase in our structural analysis was to look at various truss shapes. Our goal was to find the truss shape that most efficiently handled the load cases presented in the rules. We looked at many standard truss shapes including Warren, Howe, Pratt, Bowstring Arch, and Parker. We took these standard shapes and drew multiple variations of each in AutoCAD to find which shapes angles and member lengths resulted in the least total deflection and least overall weight. We created over 50 different truss shape possibilities. In order to find the total deflection and overall weight of each bridge, we load tested each bridge using the structural software SAP2000. This was the second phase in our structural analysis. In SAP 2000, we set up the various load cases that were presented in the rules. After importing the drawings from AutoCAD to SAP 2000, we were able to run the load tests and display the member axial forces, member moments, and dead load reactions for each bridge. This data was then input to our Excel spreadsheet for optimization. Which brings us to the third and final phase in our structural analysis, optimization. With the data from SAP 2000, we were able to calculate the minimum cross-sectional area required for each member to not fail based on the yield strength of steel. This was critical due to the significant impact bridge weight had on the overall scoring of the bridge. Next, we solved for the minimum moment of inertia required for each member to not fail in buckling for compression members or bending for tension members. 
We developed a complex spreadsheet to run these calculations for each member of every bridge. This gave us a baseline, which was the minimum weight each bridge could be without failing. From there, we optimized each bridge by increasing cross-sectional areas, which in turn increased the weight, but reduced deflection. This process continued until we found the optimal weight to stiffness ratio for each bridge. We plotted a performance curve with the results of our analysis comparing the structural efficiency of three of our bridge designs against the top seven bridges from last year's nationals competition. Our top bridge designs currently outperform the first place bridge from nationals last year. Hi, I'm Michael Ellis and I will be presenting the bridge type selection. Our team decided to focus on a simple two-dimensional shape design for the initial analysis of the bridge. This method was only possible through simple assumptions made at the start of the analysis. Those assumptions were that the bridge would be symmetrical in dimensions, number of joints, lateral members, and the weights of lateral members and connections would remain constant. Each design analyzed in SAP 2000 was based on the load cases presented in the Steel Bridge 2015 rules. For each load case, another 50 pounds was added for each decking unit. Due to symmetry of the bridge, our analysis focused on S4 and S6. Load case 1 and load case 2 would each be loaded onto 36 inch wide decks butted against one another on the center joint of the bridge span. Heavy Metal Incorporated assumed the decks would either be rigid which would lead to point loads on the edges of the decking, or flexible, which would lead to distributed loads that deflect with the bridge. Load case one assumes the decking is rigid. Scenario one is based on the S4 loading from the previous table, causing two point loads of 312.5 pounds and 625 pounds. Scenario two is based on the S6 loading from the previous table causing point loads of 262.5 pounds, 625 pounds, and 362.5 pounds. Load case two assumes the decking is flexible. Scenario one is based on the S4 loading from the previous table, causing two distributed loads of 208.33 pounds per foot. Scenario two is based on S6 loading from the previous table causing two distributed loads of 175 pounds per foot and 241.67 pounds per foot. Once member force data was obtained from the SAP 2000 analysis, we were able to optimize and compare each design alternative using this spreadsheet. When we calculated the moment of inertia, each of the forces in the spreadsheet were increased by a total of 25% to account for any possible errors in our initial assumptions. We optimized each individual member based on the largest axial load that occurred during analysis with each individual loading scenario presented. Based on the results of the overall deflection and the overall weight of the bridge being the minimum in terms of cost of all the alternative designs, Heavy Metal Incorporated recommends Design 1. I'm Jemson Maroney. I will be presenting the bridge construction method. To break down our thinking process, I will first talk about how the construction site is set up and how we have analyzed various construction details to give us an advantage during the competition. We have noted two sections, the bridge area and the staging yard area, which is separated by the construction site boundary. This boundary is where builders will walk, jog, or run back and forth to bring members, bolts, and nuts from one section to the other. All builders, members, bolts, and nuts will start at the staging yard area. No additional builders are allowed to enter the construction site once time has started. Now I will begin to talk about the bridge build time calculations. Our team did extensive research and analysis to be a top competitor, therefore focusing mostly on the past winning schools. We made estimates to come up with calculations looking at three important categories that every school performed while constructing to see how long it would take us to build. Our three categories are the collection of bolts and nuts, average runtime of bringing the bridge members from one side to the other multiplied by the number of members of our bridge, 
and the finishing touches of tightening all connections of the bridge. Each category gave us a time in seconds. Adding the time for all three categories gave us a total build time estimate for our bridge. I'm Jaylee Williamson and I'll be presenting the bridge environmental impacts. The problem statement given to us describes the site location for the bridge as a developing tropical country bisected by a river. The river is said to have farmlands on one side and the city center on the other. Our bridge's purpose is to connect the two. For the purpose of this environmental impact report, we selected a real location that met each of those requirements. That location is along the Mayaca River in Sarasota County in the southeastern part of Florida. The bridge and bridge construction should have no significant impact on the surrounding natural environment. Based on assessment of the Sarasota County land use map, it is clear that the bridge location may intersect the conservation and preservation area on the west side of the river. To mitigate this problem, we have shifted the bridge location slightly south, completely out of the conservation area. Florida's ecosystem is filled with a variety of native plants and animals, such as different pine and oak trees, wildflowers, herons and egrets, and amphibians. Through extensive research of the area, we have concluded that the bridge and bridge construction process will not affect these species. This concludes the project overview for San Diego State University's ASCE Steel Bridge. Thank you for watching.